The beautiful Australian island of Tasmania is more than a worthy welcome for this brand new historic series, the Historic Road Racing Championship in R Factor 2. This four and a half mile track will just in a few minutes have 40 classic mid 50s sports cars rumbling through the Australian countryside and also through the town of Longford right in the heart of Australia's southernmost territory. Long straights punctuated by tight corners and also a railway line to cross over as well. So hopefully there are no scheduled services today. So it's typical of the tracks of the era really and a staple of the non-championship Tasman series that was dominated by the likes of Brabham, Clark and the names of racing's golden years. So what will we see here today in something that's quite different to what we're used to seeing in sim racing? Well, my name is Aidan Moore and we have two hours of classic sim racing ahead of us here today and it's brand new for me and for a lot of people and I hope you are as interested as I am. And there's the calendar for the series. So we've got Longford today, and then we're going to round two at Spa. So the old sort of eight mile long tricky triangle that was the old Spa. And then yes, the Isle of Man TT. That's gonna take a long time, but luckily it's only gonna be something like what, three laps long, six laps long, uh, according to this sheet of paper I've got in front of me. Dundrod three hour, uh, Togger Florio three laps of that, and then the season finale at Le Mans. Three classes, five litres, three litres, two litres, and we've got 10 people in the five litre crew, but 16 people in the three litre class, and we have 14 people in the two litre class. So a big spread of, of the field. As everybody bolts off the start line. Oh, this is absolutely madness. Two hours underway, a car starting from the pit lane at the back as the cars race up towards uh, the, the viaduct for the first time. Some nice big speeds as uh, we see a tree and cars getting on the grass and trying to navigate their way through. Maybe if you break too late, as uh, some cars are making contact in the background, they navigate the viaduct. Dust being kicked up at the front. Uh, Simicic showing us being in the pit lane right now. Uh, Fatsy is just 1.1 seconds behind, so there might just be a glitch in the timing system. But like I say, this is all brand new for everybody, so it, we might have a few kinks to iron out over the course of the first few rounds. But it appears that everybody is still leading, uh, everybody's still on track, so everything's sorted itself out now. Great. So Simicic leads from Fatsy, who leads from Richie Axelson. And then we've got Parva in fourth ahead of Nico Hillebrand. Simicic enjoying a half a second lead as we see Enzo Fatsy in behind trying to slipstream down one of the long straights. Uh, Fatsy appears to have taken the lead. So oh, yeah, it looks like Simicic went too far into the final corner. That's put him back down to fourth position behind Axelson, behind the brand and your overall race leader Fatsy. About 1.1 miles or something like that. And then they cross over the railway line. You can just see that there. A little bit of air coming off them. You see more dust being kicked up in the background as they're trying to get the power down and trying to use as much of the road as possible. It is a public road. So they are going to try and maximize what they can there's no runoff areas you know this is completely different to what you'll have seen anywhere in uh, in motorsport before and it's probably the closest we're ever going to get to uh, to the proper historic racing it's a massive locker from the 202 in behind which is uh, suboptimal and this is Hillebrand making a move and that is the lead taken Jag just having a bit more Straight line speed in the Ferrari, should have a bit more stopping power. Commentator's curse as he's uh, done the full Simicic and needs to style it out again. Oh, Borgia has had a uh, an issue. Just took a sip of coffee and then saw the, uh, the car spun around. It's not going to be not very good for the, the Gordini driver driving in the French national colours. But this is the other great thing, it's so close at the minute, there's plenty of overtaking, plenty of... Oh, here we go! That's uh, that's suboptimal. Uh, I think that was... That was Bourgier that's just got sent into a ditch. Um, that's not good. These three cars now getting even closer to each other. Cannot be separated. Oh, here we go, here's a lunge. Is that car going to pull up? Is there going to be contact? Oh, great braking stir. Almost wiped the front end of that Maserati off as they cross the railway line again. We're now on board with Reese Gardner down in the bottom right-hand corner. 
and it's not like one driver's just bolted off into the distance and everybody's very spread out. Everybody seems to be very close and uh, just to give you an idea of how close it has been as Oh, tiny little bit of contact, Reese Gardner getting up the, the back end of the cars in front, giving him the hurry up. But this is the battle where it's all happening. We've got uh, Rodriguez, Britton and Gardner, who have been locked like this for the last God knows how long. And they haven't wiped each other out, so fantastic driving from the three of them. Can he get the car pulled up? to get under the viaduct. Oh, a bit of a slide, that's a mistake. Can't capitalise on it. Kicks up some dust in his face, or just trying to distract him maybe. Down the, uh, down the straight here, it's like watching outside on the Birmingham Road at three in the morning at the minute. And Jake Britton has taken the lead of the two litre class here. Expect that to flip again within the next few laps. As we now see the three litre guys, this is Martin Bayer following Rujasu. Some people using their real names, some people using their uh, screen names. But great to see half an hour in and we've still got plenty of battling going on. Here's one of them, David Sijek. Let's get the slipstream on, past the Maserati. Down the inside. And there we go. And hard on the brakes here. Aurelian Hammer has got the move done. We've got the place back from Cjack here. Under the tree, towards the bridge again. All of the cars pretty much apart from the... Uh, okay, this is what happened to, uh, to Fatsy then. Oh, no. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a tree. <laughs> It looks like it, oh, it looks like no. That, that looks more like uh, internet issues. That does. Very unfortunate because that was uh, shaping up to be a very good battle. As we see, uh, Hamart getting a freebie again. Gardner's made his way up into second place in the two-litre class. As the uh, Britain sets another fastest lap in that class as well. And here comes Rodriguez once again. He's uh, going to try and get that position back from the Australian in front of him. Though it has to be said, this uh, battle for the uh, lead of the three litre class isn't over just yet, because 1.7 seconds between Rajasu and Bayer, and with uh, pit stops to come, is close. No dirt here to worry about in these cars. Allowing them to, to follow. They, oh, well, that's just getting really close now between Hyler and the 307 in behind him. On board with the 307, a bit of a kick of dust, and that's going to be an easy position. Hyler just getting too much on the grass. Maybe he was trying to cool his tyres down. Looks like Hyler's going to try and have another go. The 209's uh, coming in for a, a bit of a look. It's just like watching Daytona at the minute. Always scrap for fifth position in, in class. Everybody being very well behaved, it's great to see. One car trying to take the outside line, maybe try a little bit of a cheeky switch back on the exit. Forced to take the long way around the corner. Is that going to mess things up for that sort of burgundy and sky blue car in behind? No, because that one appears to be making a pit stop. There's a Silver Wolf 07, sticks his Maserati at the inside, that's a lock up. Avoiding action from Hyler. And that means that the 346 has also managed to take the position, so that's two positions lost now for Hyler. A bit of a wobble there from uh, from Silver Wolf, I think. There. And now it's a drag race between the two uh, Maseratis down here. Silver Wolf 07 in the right-hand lane. Big braking zone coming up. So who's going to be the bravest here? And like I say, you miss your braking point, you're off. Three, four, six, getting a bit of a wobble on. He's got it pulled up. He's through. 
But here comes Hyler in his Bristol. Entering another drag race as they come across the start finish line. But coming up after this is the tricky sort of turn one, turn two of the viaduct corner. He's looking good for a podium in his uh, debut round as uh, Richie Axelson now in the pit lane and has been so for about uh, 35 seconds. So it says P37 and then the other timer. So it's the time actually in the pit lane and the time he's been stopped in brackets. So that's how you work that one out. So similar to how it is in, uh, in Formula 1. So here's a replay. Rodriguez. Oh, no, that's not good. Yeah, that car's, that car's done. Bent suspension. He's, he's done for the day. Pulls it right over to the side. And that'll be an escape and a F out of 10. As, uh, here we have Demare in third after that pit stop. Simicic takes the overall lead of the race. Parva in front probably still needs to pit. Lap traffic ahead of uh, Jake here. We've got the split screen view once again. On board with the Jag. And off board with the Jag. And a little bit of a mistake there. That should be an easy one. There you go. Back into second place. So now it's uh, it's back on between Jake and Simoncic. With the way that Jake was pulling away from Simoncic beforehand, who knows? It would be a uh, it would be good to to put on his CV. I beat Yerne Simoncic. Now we see Tilo Neusch in his Maserati, part of the. Uh, the Maserati Cup down there in the two-litre series. It's the battle for ninth position in the uh, the traditional German silver. Another drag race as the Maserati. Unleashes all of those Italian stallions to take the position. That's him up into ninth position then. If he can get it pulled up in time. Yes, there we go. Which really is going to be a, a power circuit. And there is your race leader, Yerne Simicic. Three time Formula Sim racing world champion. Also doing very, very well in the. Uh, Arfax 2 Formula Pro Series, Costa now in the pit lane. That will put Hillebrand into third position. Jake's starting to take a little bit of Simicic's lead out, but Simicic's still holding station. And there we go. For those of you wondering about the uh, two litre lap times, 2.38.5 fastest time in that category. So, yeah, Yerni, very, very good uh, in our Factor 2. One of the top drivers in our Factor 2. So, no surprise that he's leading a race. I've just been told that Britain's actually fourth overall currently, uh, despite leading the two-liter class. That's why the that's why the the, the three-liter and the two-liter have now swapped over because Britain is now ahead. Rajasu leading the three-liter class, the Finnish driver. It's great to to see the flags of the the individuals on screen to so figure out where everybody's from, and you can also learn what the national racing colours of Finland are. So it's entertaining and educational. You love to see it. Great to watch these uh, cars just... Oh, wrong way, sir. There you go. Style it out, carry on. Britain enjoying a uh, 43 second lead. As it stands, huge lock up there for whoever's in front of Martin Bayer. Almost an unsafe free join from the 2 1 2. That's it. Uh, I've got Drecky going uh, a little bit too deep into the final corner. Still survives though. Lives to fight another day. 
it's been the battle for second place in the three litre category, Martin Bayer versus uh, Godrecki. Oh, huge lockup. Ah, a little bit of a kick of oversteer on the exit. That's going to bring Godrecki back into it. Going to have a drag race down the main straight here by the looks of things. So I've got a couple of kinks and then it, it sort of straightens out. Looking back from uh, Bayer's car here. Did he get enough of a drive off that corner to keep a Drecki behind him? But that, that Maserati is getting a little bit closer. Sorry, that, uh, sorry, that uh, Aston Martin getting a little bit closer. Doesn't look like it's got the legs. Braking early. Gordini able to brake a little bit later. Or is it? Ooh. Another car coming in behind. Uh, oh, Nico Hillebrand's out of the race. Two of the main, sort of the main guys to watch out of the five litre category. But uh, Bayer and Godrecki still fighting in the meantime. A couple more cars being brought into things here. Uh, Nitramzen and, uh, yeah, just Nitramzen writes uh, a, probably a lap down or something like that. say always something going on closing closing a little more closing still a little bit of rubber banding and good on Godrecki for not just parking it in the middle of the road and then picking a side like Max Verstappen at Spa that one year but it looks like uh, Nitramson has got the the drag can he get it pulled up now so that's the one thing when you're racing in a, in a long straight, you forget where your braking markers are. Reese Gardner back up to fourth as the result of, of all that stuff that's happening, so seems to be recovering. Car just leaving the pits. Godrecki in third position in the three litre class here in his Aston Martin behind the two. As uh, well, Symmetry is now pitted, that's put GP laps back in the lead, so things flip-flopping so that will put uh, Jake back into the lead by about uh, 30 seconds or something like that but you know Jake's probably got a pit again anyway so expect Simicic to be back in the lead by the by the end of the race so Jake, Rajasu and Britain your three class leaders Britain with a one minute lead over Cookie in second place uh, I think there's a pit stop in that somewhere as we see the man behind the the series he's on uh, he's in the lead he's got about 40 minutes remaining let's try and win this race yeah, looks like Jake's pitted gaps now nine seconds very difficult to keep up with everything that's going on such is life when you're soloing a, an event So it's now down for the last half hour between Jake and Simicic. With uh, half an hour remaining in the next five seconds, we'll be in for a, a thrilling conclusion. GP Laps takes on Yerni Simicic. They come up towards the pub. 25 minutes on the clock. This race has flown by. Oh, that's uh, that's a solid no out of 10 right there. A little bit too uh, greedy on the gas pedal. Spun the rear out. Maybe a little bit of bodywork damage, but shouldn't be too bad. If your suspension is, is buckled, the thing will just start to turn to the to the right or to the left, depending on how you've damaged the car. And here's Jake again leading the race. Frank Godrecki leading the the uh, two, sorry, the three litre class. Rajasu just two and a half seconds in behind. Now looking at Rajasu, that Jay's probably silent because it's because uh, it's a finished name. GP laps in behind him in the Jag. 
Chopper are going to try and make his way through in a minute. He's not actually required to slow down and move over like he would be in uh, Formula One because it's a multi-class race. The responsibility is on the faster class car to safely navigate the slower class car. 15 minutes remaining on the clock. Jake is pulling away from Simoncic right now. Let's get a replay here of... Oh! I mean, in real life, no seatbelts. That would have been head first into the into the into the brickwork, and quite rightly pulls over and hits escape. So, back with Rajasu and Godreki. This is the fight for the lead of the uh, three-liter class. We have uh, another incident, apparently. Quick replay. Oh, same spot and oh, just saved. Not not good when the roll hoop is your head. On board with Godreki now. As we head up towards the pub. It's the apex nicely. A couple of drivers have come a cropper there. Dust being kicked up in front. Oh, he's pitting. It's like a Drecky. He's probably going to lose uh, second place to uh, Nitramzen. It's a controlled drive by Jake at the minute. Hopefully he doesn't need to stop again. And there's Yerne Simicic. 20 seconds behind. Absolutely insane lead being pulled out by Jake Britton, the class leader in the two litre class. You see on board with him in the bottom right. Sort of nursing the steering over the bumps, being as smooth as possible because you can't really wrestle these cars. As he's trying to avoid slapping into the back of these guys battling ahead of him, doesn't want to get involved. But he's not going to lose that much time. I mean, he's 75 seconds clear of uh, Southpaw Racer, Reese Gardner in behind. Here's Silverwolf 07 chasing down Reese Gardner for second place in the two litre category. Very strong performance from Reese. Is this a pit stop for Reese? I think it might be. He's not got enough fuel. That's going to dump him down to at least fourth and fifth. It's all gone horribly wrong for Reese Gardner. And there we go. The time has expired. So the second the leader crosses the line, that will be it. Race will be over. Richie Axelson wins the first round of the Historic Road Racing Championship from, well, assuming that he finishes the lap from Yerne Simicic. Absolutely fantastic win for for Jake. Uh, the, the man who runs the league wins the first round. But we'll need to see where everybody is in the other classes. We've got Jake Britton coming through. So, yeah, he looks to have finished. So he'll take the win in that category. And then we can only assume that Rajasu has taken the class win in the three-litre class as well. So Jacob Damare wins the first round of the Historic Road Racing Championship and with that win, he takes the championship lead. He is on nine points with Yerne Simicic and Juan Mi Costa in behind on six and four. The overall championship standings are made up of the rest of the top six finishers at Longford with Rujasu there in sixth. Not only getting the one point for six on track and therefore contributing to the overall championship, but in the three litre class championship, he gets himself eight points for that class win. And Frenek Gudrecki is in second place in that championship. The two litre class is currently being led by Jake Britton, who finished on the road behind Rujasu. So interesting to see the two and three litre cars mixing it up on track. And he leads the way ahead of Silverwolf 07 and David Sijek. Until next time, uh, well, next time we'll be at Spa. I've been Aidan Millward. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you for Spa for the next round. So until then, bye.